people will be comfortable long as you stay in your tent doors and relegate that you'll stay home and worship. But the moment you decide to get up and say, I'll go to the house of the Lord, that's when the enemy gets nervous. So Israel here has the hand of God on their life. Look at somebody say, the hand of the Lord is on me. When you have the hand of God on you, that means that you are a formidable force to your enemy. No matter what your proclivity is, no matter what the issues that you're being processed through, you still have the blessing of God. And that's what is so uh, perplexing to your adversary. They don't understand that through all of your vulnerabilities, through all of your problems, through all of your issues, God still uses you. God still has his hand on you. God still anoints you. He still blesses you. They don't understand that. And they have a problem not with you, but with God. You just get the effects of their ill will toward God. How can you bless them? How can you use them when they don't really meet the standard of what we say is holiness or righteousness? Listen, I would rather fall in the hands of God than in the hands of evil or wicked men. I just need some people to understand the, the, really, the real ingredient of mercy and grace. Grace says God gives me what I really don't deserve. Grace says that even though I am backslidden, even though sometimes I'm rebellious, even though sometimes I know I ought to give God a praise, but I come in church and I cross my legs and I think that I am important and I don't need to give God a praise unless somebody is on the keys or unless somebody else is running around the church. I need a cheerleader. I need a coach. Come on. And I need somebody to help me to jump start me. Come on. I don't do anything unless I have somebody else that's stirring my palm. Did God, he, he gives us mercy when we really need all of these antics before we give him glory. That's what mercy does. But people that really understand that I don't need all of the fluff. I don't need, whether there's never any musician or any drama. You know, in the old church, we used to sing songs like, we don't need no music. Now understand, we do we need you, we need you, we need you. So that's not what I'm saying in its context, but we said it from a place of worship that even if I didn't have it because God was the center, I would let nothing distract me. But people are so codependent that they need all of these things, all of this apparatus to connect them to a God that they should be talking to every day. If you talk to God, he'll talk.
church. He's been ready to strip in your heart. Because we like to be the managers. Because we like to be in control. We got somebody say, calm down, calm down. Stop trying to be in control. This is why people leave your life. Because you want to control the whole relationship. You don't want to let them give this and you don't give them an opportunity to express who they are. You want to be everything in the relationship.
and possess it. Right. Yes. But the enemy saw how large they were, ah. so they joined together to stop them. Stop them. So when Balak saw how large they were and that they were fearful of them, he resulted in going to get an authentic prophet and said, I will pay you whatever you want. Position. Position. I'll give you. Wow. Ah. In other words, I'll give you a blank check. Wow. Whatever you want. Whatever you can have. Just curse them. Just curse them. This is a thin line here. This is a thin line. It's a thin line. This is where we are at the end of this year, where we're sitting, scratching our head, because as I foresaid, they know too much. How, and you sitting in your kitchen, sitting in your bed, and saying, what made them do that? Like, like is it psychology? Is it pathology? Like, what? Made them do that. Come on. So he goes. He gets on a donkey, and I'm being nice. He gets on a donkey. I'm being real nice at a convocation. He gets on the donkey, and yeah, come on. He gets there, and all of his way. Come on here. What would God use a donkey to talk to you when you should have been in a realm to hear from God that you shouldn't have never went? Look at somebody and say, you should have never had that conversation with them about me. No, you shouldn't have never told them. No, 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 no. You sh it shouldn't have never happened. It shouldn't have never went down that way. I just need somebody to look at me so nobody will know it's you and just tell it like it is. Say, it shouldn't have never happened. because you think that you can guard your anointing, but you don't understand that some of these attacks, it's not about you, but it's about him. You got to understand that people will set you up because just when God has set your leader to watch your deportment for the last seven months, eight months, nine months, you mess up.
fight between your adversary and your promised place. God said if you just break out with a worship and just cross over and understand what they try to keep you out of, you have access to get it. Look at somebody and said there's only about 42 days left in 2019.
lesson. We miss just by disobeying instruction. Because we think it's just kinesthetics, you know, touch your neighbor, turn around through time. But it's a prophetic move. Prophets come with instructions. And you have to obey the instructions. If you don't obey the instructions, you just get what you get. A feeling. But if you lean on a neighbor, I need 